uh, hi everybody uh, good morning again for the second part i have a small confession uh, yesterday when we did this uh, session live uh, i somehow missed the recording part i think i goofed up on it so i am actually re recording uh, uh, this particular part 2 of uh, the product uh, life cycle and the bcg matrix applied in case of a faculty being the product uh, faculty of a b school being the product so yesterday we did the session uh, i missed the recording so i am actually re recording this stuff uh, so that it can uh, be of uh, use to people who missed out on uh, yesterday's uh, session uh, there were a few requests uh, that they would be unable to attend it and they wanted to see the recording of it so i am actually going ahead and recording it secondary uh, i will try to incorporate a few questions which came up uh, in the yesterday session asked by some of the other uh, panelists uh, in the uh, discussion uh, so that question also i will uh, handle it when i am doing this presentation as well uh, so sincere apologies that the recording got missed uh, but uh, the second bit i can do to compensate that is recording so let's get started uh, i just want to visit uh, two slides uh, on the uh first uh, uh, part of the presentation that we did last week uh, so let us start with that a small uh, touch up uh, because predominantly uh, if i would talk about product portfolio we need to understand the uh, applying of bcg matrix and uh, life cycle of a product we need to understand the different product uh, or the products are that are there in the faculty's portfolio a small recap uh, one is our training sessions that we do the teaching sessions that we do of new subjects etc Uh, expert sessions could include workshops or uh, where you go to other ca campuses other colleges or do uh, sessions workshops and corporates uh, research paper research is a nice uh, field which could actually enhance your product portfolio uh, case study creations there is a good case study done for corporate is still any time valued by corporates as a huge value for case study that's one area which should be there in your product portfolio author of books uh, uh, content writers blogs Uh, is one more area which you should uh, uh, think of content creation from a video content perspective uh, put your sessions online uh, there's a market for that if your sessions are good i'm sure you can reach out to a bigger wider audience across the globe collaborations uh, placements and admin you uh, know admissions could also be part of your collaborations getting value added course to your students or you doing value added course to your students collaborating with various uh, you know educational based companies uh, is one more way forward consulting assignments uh, uh start getting into consulting assignments or mentoring companies uh, do it pro bono okay don't take money uh, but at least one or two companies you can do it on a test basis where you are testing us or they are testing you uh, but i'm sure with the uh, array of knowledge that we have with us uh, companies will ever, you know would be actually uh, thrilled to have you uh, give them good advice uh, perspective so get into consulting assignments for small startups small companies student based startups uh, thereby you can actually Uh, test the waters before actually starting to look at that as a portfolio product in your portfolio uh, the last uh, thing would be getting into advisory boards of companies uh, strategic uh, decision making planning etc etc uh, this is not the full list i'm sure there will be a lot more that can be thought of by people this is something which came to my mind so this was something which we covered on the uh, last session uh, so one more thing which i want one last slide from the last week's uh, presentation which i want to stress on is uh, even though you have identified your portfolio uh, products uh, in your portfolio uh, find the value proposition that you are going to make to the statement the value proposition that's the key uh, it should have acceptance and it should also have a need with the audience think from the audience perspective uh, why i am stressing on think from the audience perspective is i think if we really want to build a strong brand for ourselves it is not what we have that should be conveyed it should what the customers want so i would sample suggestion would be start looking at your students as your customers uh, the because at the end of the day our brand is built because of students acceptance uh, so if we start viewing them as our customers uh, majority of the job is done so that was one small uh, tip that i can share uh, start looking at your students members as uh, you know uh, your customers uh, because at the end of the day Uh, if you give i'm sure we have a lot of stuff in us which we can give to students but if we are giving to the students what they need to be accepted in the industry uh, then we have made a mark uh, so that is one thing which uh, is very important find your value proposition the unique value proposition which we have going further um, uh, we will talk about this when i come to the later part of now let us understand the product life cycle i will not talk much about product life cycle from the um, marketing perspective but this exists so i will touch upon it very briefly 
and i'll focus more on the application part of it in a uh, faculty's perspective faculty being the product uh, perspective yeah so first and foremost which i want to say is there are four stages introduction growth maturity and decline every product will go through this every product has to go through this cycle yes sometimes the band or the band of the time span will be reduced uh, like i gave one example uh, which is of, of pages uh, pages i'm sure a few years back there was this concept called pages this was a huge market at that point in time that was a strong way of wireless based communication the introduction was good the growth was phenomenal but the maturity of the product never came because uh, by the time the product was still in the growth phase cell phones started coming in the cost of cell phones got reduced sms's uh, were started to be applied so sms's we placed pager because people were not comfortable talking to a pager company to send them this text message to a particular pager yes it was still economical but with prepaid cell phones coming in very strongly in the market this product of pagers did not reach maturity but then uh, they started their decline so the bandwidth the time span of a particular phase will always be reduced so i ask a question to everybody here if at all you want to increase the time span which time span would you want to increase uh, would you want to increase the time span of uh, introduction growth maturity or decline i got two answers or let me play devil's advocate here some people will say growth life span has to be increased as much as you can increase growth time span uh you are very sure that you are going to grow and you are going to make uh, money out of it and some people say maturity has to be example okay now let us understand and evaluate both the prospects okay first the normal thought process majority people feel maturity if i can expand the timeline of maturity of the product uh, then um, we can reap the benefits okay before we get into this let us uh, let me spend some time on understanding life cycle uh, product life cycle introduction phase is a phase where the product is getting launched the product is getting launched okay our product portfolio, product from our product portfolio is getting launched it might be new in the market or it might be old in the market but you are launching that new product that's the question we don't know how this product will perform in the market whether it will be accepted whether it will not be accepted growth phase is where you have started growing you are putting in money in the system and when i say money i'm going to use a word not money here today in today's session i'll be using the word resources you put in any resources you put in money resource you put in effort resource you put in time resource because we are talking about faculty uh, it makes sense to talk of resources so any amount of resources that you put on a particular product in the growth phase the returns that you are going to get is going to be also proportional you put in more resources you get in more output uh, now the output that we are talking here not necessarily need not be money uh, because uh, from a faculty perspective it could also be acceptance recognition branding everything so the more amount of efforts that you are putting okay you can get a better output okay now any kind of non tangible uh, output that you are looking on also will be translated to monetary going down the line so let us focus on growth phase is that phase where whatever amount of resources extra resources that you are putting you are putting more time you are putting in more efforts uh, it will give you a tangible result proportional to the amount of efforts or amount of resources pumped in maturity phase says that if i am not putting any efforts extra efforts i still will be making that peak uh, returns that i am going to get i don't need to put in efforts to make that kind of output that i am looking at decline phase has to come we'll talk about decline coming down the line so maturity phase lot of people will say isko if i extend this i can capitalize i can capitalize on uh, you know the existing uh, uh brand value that i have created and it's time of milking that brand value milking that brand okay now uh, yes uh, but this is predominantly sometimes not in our control i don't know whether i have reached maturity or not okay because uh, it it sometimes depends upon the market condition also if the market industry has stopped growing and that is why you are there uh, in the peak performance where competition is not there then it is also dangerous because we do not know when the maturity period will start getting over and decline starts happening so that is one area of point of concern we'll talk about it in detail in the coming slide growth phase growth phase is one more area where you need to understand that this growing phase if i can prolong it i know for certain that if i put in resources if i am putting in money if i am putting in time if i am putting in efforts my results are going to be proportional but the only challenge is how big are my pockets okay if it is money do i have that kind of money 
to invest and grow you know phenomenally okay that is a market growth for example i'll give you an example i'm sure that there are people like byju's classes who had uh, the vision who had the idea to create video content but probably they did not have the resource power uh, okay because they did not come out first or they did not have the funding that was required to uh by the way vedanto yesterday saw an advertisement amir khan is now the brand ambassador of vedanto so vedanto is also now going to get in big in the market uh, fighting with byju's head on okay i just saw the advertisement yesterday uh, so in the growth space it's about pumping in resources to get that leverage there was a huge market in the indian uh, education industry like i always say education industry is one of the growing along with real estate uh, sorry uh, real uh, uh, along with uh, what do you call it? uh retail industry and uh, healthcare these are the three industries which are growing so in the growth space do i have that kind of resources if it is time resource i have 24 hours in a in a, in a day if it is uh, efforts again come boils down to 24 hours a day so or access to resources is again limited so growth space capitalizing on it depends upon the extent of the bandwidth that you can pump in resources so that is the uh, the other side to look at how to elongate the growth phase. So these are some of the things which we need to understand. Talking about decline, decline is inevitable. Every product is going to start declining. But the humble request is start understanding that this product is declining. I'll give one example uh, from the education industry because yesterday one gentleman asked me about uh, a declining in the academic industry. Um, uh, <laughs> like you know, what I say, mechanical engineering in a normal small rural college, rural engineering college in a rural area. Okay, uh, once upon a time, mechanical was great. The industry was growing. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, mechanical seats were getting filled because there was a huge demand, and any college had its own place in the market. So they were at the right place at the right time. Today, I still be top top engineering colleges, mechanical still gets filled. But small colleges in rural villages, mechanical engineering is not getting filled. Okay, one of the reasons is because the market demand is reduced with market, you know, manufacturing getting a big hit uh, last few years in India uh, is getting a big hit. So mechanical engineering is got, it started seeing a decline in, in some of get seats getting filled in mechanical engineering seats was a big challenge. So that is one area where decline has started happening. So we need to understand that and we need to start capitalizing on the brand that the college had. A good college might have had a brand uh, in mechanical engineering in a rural area with, uh, you know, it taking care of everything. So they need to have capitalized on that brand. So what we do when you realize that the product is getting late training, we start doing product extensions. Okay, it could be a line extension or it could be a brand extension. You need to start looking at me mechatronics as a option which today people are giving. Computer science, you know, new products have started coming in uh, like... Uh, I have seen uh, embedded design uh, engineering, uh, artificial in uh, intelligence engineering. These are all new product ex extensions uh, because they realize that some of the products are slowly dying down. So they are giving the customer a new option so that leveraging on the brand value that they had of a product which is now declining or which is in that slow phase of uh, going down. So this is something which we need to understand. So this will come when you realize and you accept that this product is aging. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, some B schools, uh, in fact, BTU in Karnataka actually started a course on, uh, it's part of their syllabus on uh, HR analytics. Okay, now this is a product which is getting launched in the introduction phase. It has happened because people understood that's a huge gap between the industry and data analytics or business analytics is the next way, uh, way future. So they before realizing a normal HR course, which is slowly, HR will never die down by it. But normally relating to the brand value of an MBA itself is coming down. Some colleges were smart enough to get in a course on data analytics. So these are some of the products which is uh, leveraging on the existing brand value we bring in at product uh, the introduction phase, you know, which would be a product extension and the cycle starts again. You know, you restart the cycle again. Uh, here I gave an example of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Maruti True Value. Okay. Uh, or the Maruti 800 was facing out, it was slowly declining because at that point in time, it was a absolutely no competition market. There are only two cars available in the market. One was Maruti 800 and Fiat uh, Padmini, uh, Premier Padmini, uh, Fiat. So these are the two cars which are there in the market. Suddenly with the opening of the economy, roughly around the year 2000, there were four cars that were about to get launched in the uh, Hunchback series. Uh, Indica, Ma Devu Matis, uh, and uh, you had uh, Horn, uh, Santro from Honda, uh, and then uh, you had one more car uh, coming out. Santro from Hyundai, and then you had one more car which was coming at uh, which was uh, 
uh, Maruti's wagon up. So these are the four cars that are coming in the market, and uh, you know they were uh, kind of all fighting with each other. Uh, and uh, people were, uh, you know, I will not say tired of Maruti, but they wanted to look at variety. Okay, they wanted to look at another option. Okay, so what happened? Uh, these were the uh, Maruti did a beautiful call. They started a true value company, uh, which was into servicing, and they said we'll buy back your cars. And they offered a heavier discount in case you are buying an, uh, you know, a, a Indica or an Alto. So that why they were trying to retain their customer by shifting them from a Maruti 800 and giving them a replacement car from their own brand value. That by not losing their customers. Okay, this was a strategy. Similarly, let us talk about one more line extension which True Value does. Uh, you know, the beautiful strategy. Today, when you buy a car, uh, when you buy a car, Maruti actually has the service center actually has a driving classes. Okay, you can learn driving classes from Maruti itself. What happens? The biggest advantage is that you are giving them a new product along with the uh, one product. So you are actually getting the pro, you know person from a brand extension perspective that okay, you have bought a car from me. We'll give you an added service of a free simulated based driving classes and a real time testing driving classes. Uh, so that customer does not look elsewhere to learn driving from a driving school or something like that. So that's a extra value add where you hold on to customers. So product extensions are the key uh, to hold on to customers or get new customers, okay? So this was something which I wanted to share. Now let us come to specific to faculties. Introduction phase. Uh, the, one second, huh? I just want to check out if the recording is happening. Yeah, it's happening, yeah. So let us now come to the introduction phase. Uh, so from a faculty perspective, uh, it could, there are two courses, an ex old faculty kind of a thing. A faculty who's put in a lot of years in the system already. For them, a new course uh, could be a new product. Now, this selection of a new course could be two reasons. One is it is market driven, like data analytics that I gave, HR analytics that I gave. These are market driven, okay? But it could also be that you have joined a new college and that is why you are doing this course for the first time. So, it could also be both ways. A product life cycle may, your product of teaching or taking a class can also be a new product when the audience is new, okay? Or it could be when the market is new. For example, all said and done, ideal ice creams, if they started in uh, Bangalore, uh, it could be probably part of their growth exercise, but it still has to approach that new market with a, uh, you know, uh, from an introduction uh, phase itself. Of course, the introduction level will be lesser because uh, you have a lot of built in, a lot of expertise over a period of time. You, the processes have got taken care of. Uh, so uh, the time span from introduction phase to growth phase will be definitely lesser. The efforts required will be definitely lesser because you have a proven plan proven success uh, in the previous market but still a new course has to come through the introduction phase it could be because it is market driven or the audience is new sometimes the faculty itself is new somebody who is entering into the academic area for the first time obviously in, even though the product was old but the product coming from the service the teaching coming from this gentleman or the lady is still going to go through the introduction phase so that is something which we need to take care of okay now the key here here is from a fresher perspective is innovation. We bring in fresh, fresh blood. So that's why we always say every organization should actually have fresh blood always in the system because the more number of fresh people in the organization, uh, more different new types of thinking starts coming in. But again, value creation has to be the key. Innovation could be one of the ways to bring about uh, value creation. Uh, and the education industry is one area where I think there's a lot of area for innovation. Uh, okay, it's unexplored. Okay, slowly now we have started uh, coming in. Uh, thanks to the online um, uh, teaching, uh, I think we have started the tip of the iceberg where a uh, lot of new ideas have actually started coming in place. Okay, so that's a new product portfolio in most of the faculty's perspective. So any product, okay, even if you are getting into consulting, it has to come to the introduction phase. So start somewhere. Uh, if you are getting into research papers uh, and you have, this is your first paper that you are going to submit, it has to come to the introduction phase till you build a brand for you and people will come and say, can we submit a booklet on case studies? Can we submit a book? Can we create a, become an author for a book on case studies? Uh, today, for me, uh, YouTube videos, this is the first, it, it's in the product life cycle. My online training courses, this is the product life cycle. Uh, it's in the introduction phase itself. Okay. Yeah. So let us now come to the second phase from a faculty perspective, the growth phase. So here, retention is the key. Uh, the strategies that every company uh, from a marketing perspective uses uh, to in the growth space is hold on to your existing customers, hold on to your existing customers and then look for new customers. 
if you are looking at new customers with a hit and run basis take one customer chhod do next customer chhod do then you are not going to grow because you are not going to build a base for growth it is still pre the introduction phase itself so holding on to your existing customers the key and then in the growth phase you start looking at this customer and taking them to the next level i'll give a personal example here nothing personal uh, I, i i have done lot of i have in the during the covid times i started doing a lot of programs okay for faculties i used to do one and a half hours programs on some of the key topics which were my forte my areas of strength i did a program on online training i did a program on case study i did a program on this thing so when i got one customer a few faculties registered for one course where i charged them some money based on my brand value i started getting repeat orders from the same faculty for my different courses uh, one classic example is durai sir who was there in the session yesterday uh, he started with my first session from that session we went into a design thinking course which he did for a five days course then we did a uh, you know an nlp based program for five days uh, this thing so holding on to that customer is again a key and then you start growing because i start putting in efforts and resources to bring my next product Uh, which is in the growth phase i pump in those way i have a customer i have a customer base i have a market ready so that is one of the things growth can be two things organic or exponential organic growth is the amount of efforts that i put in is going to give me definitely going to give me results on a higher value exponential growth is when you have extreme amount of resources bandwidth at your back end okay so that you pump in that much resources in the market you start exploding randomly globally uh, throughout india uh, and big markets uh, with the kind of money resource that you can pump in uh, classic example byju uh, byju today uh, is the products are still in the growth phase okay we will talk about it in detail i have a slide only on byju to understand it better um, their uh, videos uh, video classes which is recorded and uploaded on the website uh, is predominantly still in the growth phase that is why the amount of advertisement that is coming in uh, for byju's classes now they have shifted from that to a launching a new product which is in the introduction phase which is byju's classes okay where it will be a one to one live interactive online session uh, with the tutor and the uh, mentee mentor and the mentee so this is a new product which is they are launching but they are leveraging on the existing brand so more amount of resources that you pump in uh, you start getting magnifold results rather than going slow but there both are growths organic growth is also a growth exponential growth is also a growth exponential growth is usually attached with a lot of money being pumped in, in the system okay that's the resource which gets pumped in to get exponential resource uh, growth let's talk about the maturity phase now we there's a small point of conscience uh, we need to understand at maturity phase Uh, i asked the question yesterday and i got a beautiful right answers from most of the faculties uh, one question which i asked was uh, if there are two companies a and b okay if a and b assuming there are two companies and if i say a company has grown 50% has done more business uh, sales turnover okay uh, they did 50% more turnover than last year and company b did only 2% more turnover than last year which company did more business Uh, can we give an answer uh, irrespective uh, we got the right answer yesterday uh, you cannot the reason why you cannot is because it depends upon the denominator for example if uh, reliance grows even at 4% it is still going to be into thousands of crores okay over the last the sales turnover increased by 4% because the denominator of the previous year was very high a 4% is going to translate to thousands of crores but at the same time if my this thing is say 100% growth over previous year and last month i did not i made a few lakhs of uh, rupees okay uh, it's going to multiply that it's still not going to be as compared to the thing so the denominator is very important before we make a rational decision why i am saying this is because we need to take care that when a product i'm saying is maturing and the growth is not happening is it because of two reasons is it because my volume is so high that my growth is only 0.1% that is why this peak is tapering then it is still in maturity phase but if the growth the the increase that is happening is negligible but not because of my denominator being strong but because that market for that particular service or product has reduced then it is point of caution it means that the maturity phase is slowly starting to wane so this fact check we need to understand so no point in Uh, pumping in uh, resources sometimes if the denominator was so high 
denominator was so high okay it is still in growth phase because uh, the negligible increase could not be because the market is reducing but it is also could be because the denominator was so high that is one of the reasons why reliance is getting now uh, in a strong growth phase by uh, getting money from uh, people jio is getting money from uh, you name it people have invested in reliance uh, so understand this so we need to understand the growth phase and the maturity phase from a denominator perspective as well as from the market uh, growth market's growth perspective not your product's growth perspective the market's growth thing so this is something which we always need to do as a fact check is the market still there or is the market size starting to shrink though my stake in the uh, market is huge so that's a call which we need to take talking about the next one the last one decline is inevitable accept it but the question is if we don't accept it we won't come out with new products or we won't introduce new products so that's the first thing that we need to do accept that your products have start, uh, some of the products have started declining so here is where uh, i want to bring with respect to faculties uh, you need to have a few products in the introduction stage okay if you if you if you are relying on only one product in your product portfolio um, if the market reduces and with online training happening across uh, the globe um, and people accepting students have started to accept online training so online courses Uh, probably can start eating into your markets if i can get uh, as a student an admission in a college which is far away from my home but because it becomes affordable because of it being online in nature okay and the certification value uh, having the same acceptance in the market which is now slowly uh, slowly starting to happen then i don't know uh, because of market conditions my existing product in the portfolio might start declining so let's be very uh, wary of that fact so some suggestions in each of the four phases Uh, in the introduction phase uh, my humble suggestion have at least two products today start working on creating new two products in the product portfolio uh, easiest thing to start is start consulting i am sure whichever area you are in rural area urban area there will be some startups some companies who need help you are in finance uh, yesterday there was durai sir who was sharing his opinion uh, you know uh, sorry not opinion uh, a live example where Uh, he started uh, consulting on finance basically accounting principles to a small company who was running a small business but did not have much financial knowledge through a student uh, so it was a win win situation for him for the student and uh, uh, you know the company also so start getting into small consulting assignments uh, uh, it could not be starting consulting bad if you want to you can start with the fulfilling requirements uh, statutory obligations everybody needs uh, you know accounting to be done so you can use your student it gives the students an exposure uh, you can use your students to start using uh, making research papers uh, case study papers you know these are some of the things where student uh, uh, you can uh, yesterday there was a beautiful advertisement that flick part is looking out for interns for 500 rupees a day uh, see internship money uh, is something interns are something which every organization look i work with lot of interns in my companies where i hire interns uh, very little money that we pay but it's a win win situation i get good quality people at a lesser cost at the same time from a students perspective it is something that exposure that brings to the table which is going to be a very strong value add from it it's a win win situation and we are not exploiting people we are giving something uh, for something in return it's it's a give and take and a mutual give and take so that is something which you can look out for good students in other thing utilize them give them the gyan uh, duplicate your knowledge through them and take it to the next level so have new products in your product portfolio it's a humble request that i can say uh it's high time that we start this growth phase now growth phase uh is something where you have to put in efforts put in resources so the amount of resource that you put is going to give you the amount of uh re returns that you want from a particular uh, product in your portfolio so first thing is innovation is going to be one of the biggest key. to innovate you have to put in resources you have to put in efforts so some of the techniques which i can share is gamification i'm mentoring a company called cool guru llp Uh, which is actually created games to teach subjects it's actually created a lot of games to teach subjects so you can uh, this company uh, sets up business laboratories uh, for this thing i'm uh, also in the consultants board of that company so you can utilize uh, you know this uh, particular uh, know how to teach through games you can have uh, do some research and find out some innovative assignments you know which creates you gives you a value in front of your students um case studies it requires time teaching through the art of case studies activity based teaching experiential learning these are some of the things which you need to use in the growth phase to 
uh, create that momentum and uh, make sure that your uh, efforts that you are putting in is also giving you results in a big manner. Maturity phase. Now, here, uh, let me just, from a faculty perspective, today, if I'm taking a particular subject for seven years, eight years, nine years, I don't need to put in efforts to teach that subject to any new students that is coming in because the product for me is that product is in the maturity phase. Without putting in efforts, I can still get the same kind of output that I've always been getting. So that product is in maturity. Now here, that's a strategy which every company does is the power to duplicate. Okay, is that possibility that I can duplicate what I'm doing or automate the system? Okay, when I say automate, I'm not talking about artificial intelligence or automation as a technology perspective, but uh, I got this question yesterday, so I'm answering it uh, proactively. I'm talking about the ability to create duplicates because when there are more duplicates of my, uh, my team is doing what I am doing today, then by default, I guess push to the upper level where I start working on something else new. I can bring in new product launches. So at the maturity phase, every company starts thinking, can I duplicate this process? Uh, you know, can I duplicate the entire process system? Uh, let me give you my own example, uh, an online session. Okay, I today is recording that I'm doing. I'm doing this a second time. I'm actually doing it because uh, this is going to be a one-time effort for me. But this video is there in my repository. Any of the people can actually watch it. So it's duplication is the key. Once a product has reached maturity level, you can uh, you know leverage on the power of duplication or automation. So that is something which you should think of. The moment first thing in decline strategy is accept that this product is declining. So that's the first thing acceptance. Once you accepted that this product is declining immediately the next thing that you need to do is start building up a new brand a new product the product extension could be a line extension or could be a brand extension now let us understand the difference between line extension and product extension line extension is normally size shape color you know fanta comes with a 200 ml bottle 500 ml bottle uh, you know uh, this thing uh, different thing predominantly aimed at the same customer uh, to hold on to customer so these are line extension products okay Brand extension is those products where you, you you know promote this person and you're also looking at new people. Like for example, Pepsi comes out with the Diet Pepsi, a new brand. Uh, or recently, uh, uh, which is that uh, competing with Kurkure, uh, Bingo's has come with Tede Mede. Bingo was a strong brand in their way, chips segment or the wafer segment or tortilla chips uh, segment, whichever segment you can call it. They wanted to enter into the next man. So what they do, they leverage on the existing Bingo's brand name. So Bingo's brand name is what is going to capture the audience to try out this product again. So that is why Bingo Tede Mede is competing with Kurkure. So they use that brand of one brand. So the, the you know, like I was giving an example of a particular brand, uh, MBA colleges, uh, engineering colleges getting into MBA was capitalizing on their existing engineering brand and using that brand to create a uh, MBA course, okay? That's called brand extension. IITs today have MBAs, right? Uh, IITs today have MBAs. It is a brand extension of IIT brand. NITs have got uh, MBAs. So that's a brand extension. So this is predominantly. So first thing is be ready with the line extension or a brand extension, but be ready with the topic, okay? Be ready with uh, teaching. Maybe you want to have another courses in corporate, that's a line extension. But as a faculty, if you're starting with a course on, uh, uh, say, if you're doing case studies, if you're going to do things, that those are brand extensions, leveraging the brand of you as a person. So this is the four strategies, point of caution, whatever you can call. These are small suggestions in each of the four phases. Going further, some safeguards that need to be do, uh, need to be taken care of. The first and foremost safeguard that you want, uh, I would request is extend growth phase as much as you can. Okay, growth phase is probably the one phase which you need to uh, look at uh, very uh, positively because that is one thing where you know very clearly efforts put in going to give you the results uh, kind of a thing. But be open to reality checks. Okay, you should understand whether the product has reached maturity because then whatever efforts you're going, going to put extra on that particular product is not going to give you that kind of dividends that you're looking at. So the, those times what we need to do, we have to accept that it has reached maturity phases, push the product, create a brand value for that, can milk the product and start having new products in your growth phase or your introduction phase from that day onwards. So the strategy is that you need to have products in every first of the three phases so that you can devote your efforts to that. Too many products in introductory phase is also dangerous. It, it sucks you out of your uh, resources uh, because if you start with four particular products, I will start a case study product, I will start a, 
uh, research project. I will also start a product portfolio research. I will do research. I will do this. I will do this. You don't have the bandwidth. We all have the same 24 hours. So probably I will suggest have a only uh, two is fine. Uh, uh, two or line extension products. You can have two or three. Absolutely fine. Uh, okay. But if it is brand extension products, uh, you want to do two things, three things, and I have only two product for in the, the introduction phase to start with, so that you can give attention and time spent. Uh, too much in introduction space, you don't know how the product is going to go. Whether it is actually going to go into a growth stage faster, or you need to put in lot of time to get into the growth stage is dicey. Uh, so don't have too many products in the introductory phase. Having two products in the growth phase is far, far, far better. So if you can push a product to growth phase, start focusing on growth phase to a large extent and introductory phase lesser extent because uh, growth phase gives you return faster because efforts put in is return. But in the introductory phase, I don't know whether it is going to go to a growth phase as, and how soon will it go to growth phase. That is one thing we need to be taken care of. One small mistake which a lot of people make, uh, even in corporates, is lack of vision. Uh, they they have two products or three products or their product portfolio has got a lot of products and every product talks of something different. Now that is going to be dangerous because the, com the customers gets confused that what is the value proposition in each. If you want to have this kind of a scenario, you should have different brands for different. Uh, you know, uh, big conglomerates have got different brands. Uh, one company has got multi brands to portray a particular uh, product range. Uh, like uh, I have an economy car, I have a normal car, I have a high-end car and they are all come in separate, separate brand names. Okay. So why every, it's not a company brand that is coming in, but as an individual, it's prominently my personal branding that is going to come into the fourth uh, front. So when it is coming in the forefront, I need to be a bit careful because we should not confuse our customers that AB karta hai, AB karta hai, AB karta hai, AB karta hai. We are doing everything. We don't know what we are racing for. Uh, and what is going to be our value proposition to the customer. Stick to one value proposition and that should flow in all your product portfolios. I'll give a personal example of mine. Uh, I am into training. I again say my, my value proposition that I bring in my sessions, my case studies, my uh, research method is predominantly whatever I talk to my product portfolio will be content. Okay, my content that I bring to the table, which I do backend research, but I don't talk about that. I say my content is going to be different. And most important thing is I my sessions will be interactive in nature. Uh, today, this session will not be interactive because it is not live recording. Uh, but normally what happens is I, I love people asking questions because the interaction throws a lot of light. Even I get some fact checks. I get I learn something in the process. But the interaction is the key. Uh, so interaction is one of my uh, USPs along with content. So that is my USP or my value proposition. In fact, I did a program on magic. I taught young children how to do magic because I'm an amateur magician myself. But even I sold my magic course, not on the tricks that I'm going to say. I said my magic is not about knowing how to do magic, but understanding the art of communication, interacting with people. So my content was not on the magic part of it, but on the effective communication and how to interact with your audience. So my again, my USP was the same. Uh, my content will be different and I will interact with your kids. I will make them ask me questions and I will help them, mentor them and take them to the next level. So mentoring or something which I said, interactive sessions, whether it is my classroom sessions with students, whether it is my magic sessions with students or uh, my NLP sessions, which I do for audience, it is always going to be interactive because when people ask questions, I have uh, the ability to answer them and, and make them understand and make them realize. Okay, so that's my USP. So never lose that USP of your product because uh, your customers will get confused. So every product portfolio, every product and product portfolio should have the same value proposition. And that's based on your strength. So pick up your value proposition. Age of automation. When I say automation here, I stand corrected. It's not about physical, the, the machine automation part of it. Duplicacy could be a better word. Uh, so start in the maturity phase. You need to start focusing on duplicating your efforts. If you can create people like you, you can go to the next level. And this is one thing which I really want to share here. I'll give a personal example so people will understand better. I've done a lot of... Uh, Things which is not supposed to be done. I'll give an example. Uh, let us take Baiju's first example. The Baiju started training teaching classes. Now, fantastic. He might have been a very good teacher. Okay, word of mouth say he started growing. But if you really want to take it your business to the next level, uh, Baiju has got only 24 hours to teach. So where does he make money? He makes money when he is able to duplicate his efforts. He's able to create multiple Baiju's of himself. 
so what he did he started recording the video classes and sending those video classes or selling those video classes so his effort is only one time it is more about drama easier example would be drama and movie okay drama mein jitna bhi bada hit drama rehne do they make money only as long as they perform but if the same drama is converted to a movie uh, it's it, they can go and rest and do the next movie shooting but the money will be made from the uh, existing drama movie because it's duplicatable so that is one thing which we need to understand as teachers and trainers i started my business and i understood that training may unless i duplicate we don't go to the next level it is a hard hitting lesson for me and today i am slowly starting to rectify the mistakes that i have done and now i am focusing on duplicacy uh, mentoring companies uh, and the likes of it okay so that is something uh, which is a point of caution and a safeguard that we all need to take so going further let us now come to the last topic which is uh, bcg matrix i am a very very big fan of bcg matrix because uh, we all understood that efforts need to be put in but which product should i put a lot of efforts Uh, actually comes uh, you get lot of clarity on the bcg matrix because a product life cycle does not talk to me or it talks to me about my market share my income that i am getting or the my output that i am getting but a bcg matrix brings into one more diamond it's a two dimensional uh, matrix one is my share yes but it also tells me whether the market the industry is growing so to understand bcg matrix very briefly i'm not going into the basics like i said of bcg matrix that's a given Uh, but let me just tell you uh, if the market is growing and i am uh, starting entering into a market because i see the market is growing and i want to get into that market then i start as a question mark because i do not it's probably related to the growth phase i don't know whether i will grow or not uh, sorry introductory phase i don't know how this product will actually say it's a question mark it might boom and go to a growth phase or it might drop and go straight uh, to the declining phase with the growth phase and the maturity phase being time span of very less okay it goes to the dog phase so that is predominantly what question mark is once my product gets into the star phase the market is growing and i am slowly becoming a market leader in that market whichever i am talking of so i start uh, it's a growth phase i start pumping in money because the market is growing my market share increases my overall growth is also increased so that is predominantly related to the growth phase slowly the market industry starts receding the industry has started receding so what i do i am still the market leader but new competition is not most likely not going to enter that market because they don't want to enter into a market where somebody is already strong okay and at the same time the the market is not growing so what they do nobody is entering so you start milking the cow don't put in extra efforts extra resources in those time it doesn't give you much dividend because there is no much scope for growth from a market perspective 95% market share hai but the industry is not growing Uh, so another five percent के लिए I don't need to put in that much efforts. I can put my efforts in something else and get a better result if I have a star product in my portfolio. Dogs. Uh, there are some companies which still have dogs product. I gave an example. Now dogs product industry market is not growing. Okay, but uh, my market share was once upon a time the peak. Now that is also not growing. But people do it predominantly for two reasons. One is uh, to for retaining of the brand value or some. Uh, personal reasons emotional appeal they don't want to kill a brand uh, something like that for example one example which i gave yesterday uh, was mtr the restaurant the restaurant okay uh, that's still an mtr restaurant amazing restaurant they are still making good money uh, but uh, they don't pump in money in that uh, branding their mtr restaurant the tiffin restaurant which is there in uh, near lalbagh in bangalore uh, it start there was one of the this thing we started from the kitchen and went to the house Uh, there are some companies which started from the household and then entered the kitchen basically starting with household products masala products and then entering to a restaurant service there are some companies and there are some companies which started from uh, restaurants mtr started from a restaurant and then went into your came into your house with the household masalas and all the mixes that they give uh, that's a different brand strategy okay now talking about mtr as a restaurant uh, they they it still has some emotional appeal Okay, but business-wise, when they open another MTR restaurant, I highly I doubt they don't want to take to this product to the six. So it's probably from an emotional appeal. One more example from personal branding examples is politicians. Okay, I will not take any names of any party or people, but uh, sometimes what happens the brand where the market growth of that party is less and the market share of that personal person is also less. Uh, so what happens? The individual appeal, but at the same time, if I remove this brand person. and i put in another brand then it sometimes becomes dicey for me because the entire brand value will go for a toss so sometimes because of emotional appeal also 
you hold on to those brand or sometimes to show that you are still fighting you hold on to these brand values so these are some of the uh, four things uh, of the bcg matrix so now uh, if you want to mix both now this is the beautiful look at the beautiful scenario bcg matrix and product life cycle if you mix both the question mark is predominant in the introductory phase which goes to the start phase which is the industry is growing you start getting a market share and then the industry slowly starts reaching saturation so what you do you start uh, milking the cash cow and then it slowly starts coming into decline so uh, a nice combination of bcg matrix and product life cycle but let us now come to one example and then i'll talk about how to use bcg matrix from a faculty's perspective um byju started with physical classes which is now closed but that product would have come in the docs category because physical classes where he used to personally train students tuitions kind of a thing today the byju star online uh, star product is their online videos okay they have two of flavors one is with hardware without hardware uh, they started with only hardware because they were probably apprehensive of their data being stolen uh, but today they have got their data on the cloud and they are promoting their online version very strongly because they make lot of money in the uh, uh, cloud version rather than the physical version because you don't have to pay for the hardware once the software is installed it's only about giving access and taking the access so but still both of them are in the star phase it is still not reach cash cow and probably it will not reach cash cow because with syllabus changing every 3 years the market is still going to grow uh, so you can't be complacent so you have to pump in resources at that point in time and education as i said is an industry is growing Uh, they might probably enter into other areas probably they might enter into uh, a degree they might also enter into mbas and the other post graduation program also that might be there in their pipeline i am not part of their advisory board to know that but uh, this this products are still in their uh, star category only they have to pump in resources because with the competition also pumping in lot of money uh, they cannot be complacent it has not yet reached cash cow stage question mark uh, by use online classes their new product Uh, which is the physical one to one uh, duplicacy is not there but they are creating new people to teach okay so they basically teach the trainer train the trainer the trainer starts uh, teaching the students so they can still be able to duplicate and automate that the training process part of it for getting new people to train so that is something which they are doing it's still in a question mark phase uh, but yes with their experience and they are already having their market they are targeting not new students they are targeting their existing students uh, to shift along with our video you need a private tutor so we are there to fill in that gap and they are also using covid uh, to a large extent because parents will be uh, comfortable with leveraging on the byju brand they are bringing a brand extension here byju's classes what is the advantage a brand like byju's classes is still better than a private tutor who is going to do an online tuition to you uh, who stays in the next colony but cannot come because of covid reasons is doing an online lesson you still somehow there's a Uh, brand uh, value attached to byju's classes you might still not hire the local guy you might hire byju's online classes so that is still in the question mark it's a new product so understand this from a byju's perspective let us know small thing which i would want you all to do is place your products uh, first of all identify your product portfolio and put your products in these categories because if we put this product in our categories then somewhere we get a lot of idea on how which product where i need to put in more efforts so that it gives you a better return now two three things which i want to say market share uh, need not exactly be monetary terms or market growth need not be market growth the market itself can be relevant uh, you know small suppose you are looking at your market to be only your college you are looking at your market to be only your college then also absolutely fine so you have uh, products which might be in star uh, suppose i am uh, teaching a particular subject it could still be in growth phase depending upon whether i have got this product newly uh, newly to be taught or i am doing a case study newly to be taught so it could still fit in any of this and similarly the market share uh, your market share is your acceptance rate i would uh, of course we don't have monetary terms here we can talk about acceptance rate in students mindsets uh, it could be acceptance rates of your uh, uh, case studies or research papers uh, acceptance rates if you are doing consulting then you can bring in monetary value as well so the market could be geography based the market could be uh, you know market could be uh, uh, mba institutes perspective or uh, you know you, you can have a combination about what is your market to take a strategy you don't have to always look at education industry as a mba colleges as a market to understand this strategy you can uh, make the market size smaller depending upon where you want to grow so that's one thing which you take care of um 
place your products even in your product life cycle uh, matrix it gives you a lot of clarity as to uh, an acceptance of reality so here i will share with you my own product life cycle so since i am also in the training area uh, you can actually fit in and then this is a small guideline where you can start putting your product portfolios uh, my products today in the initial growth phase is uh, the online orientation which i do i used to do a lot of orientation programs and nlp based uh, influencing the interviewer pre placement trainings those product has reached maturity uh, where i don't put in efforts to reach out to people i get calls from colleges and i work with around 100 colleges where i go and do trading program with uh, covid starting it was a big problem for me but uh, kindly i you know i was probably uh, i did some homework to understand that this is happening and i started my online courses from february march first i started my first uh, training program where i invited all my existing faculties uh, whomever i knew and i charged them one program for an online how to influence students online how to influence the students in an online manner that video is there now free of cost that time i charged uh, faculties uh, and i got a good amount of response and from there onwards i started but i am doing lot of online uh, orientation programs today uh, to lot of colleges um, still in the introductory phase because i am inventing on uh, creating activity based online training uh, training online normally is, is a gyan session but i am actually incorporating certain online activities Uh, to bring about mba teaching uh, orienting students of business students so that's something which i have started as a new product um covid times big problem was about my nlp programs which is normally physical so i converted my nlp online and not only that thanks to a very close friend of mine called shobha rani we started the us market okay and it was a blessing in disguise because normally in india we were earning in rupees uh, it kind of earning in dollars kind of help me uh buffer the shock that covid gave to everybody so that was a, that's still a new product i designed two more products design thinking and case study based uh, workshop now these are the products to be very honest with you these products i don't give it free in my sessions because this is my product which is in the introduction phase but the feeder for this program the feeder for this program is actually one of the feeders is predominant the session that i am doing the sessions that i have planned on the first and third saturday and honest to admit it yesterday also i admitted it uh, the feeder program uh, i give online this thing is more like a trailer so you understand concepts you understand how uh, probably how different what is my value proposition and then you will see value in my other training program so these programs are which i do on a monetary basis which is there in the introductory phase but my line extension for a few products which are reaching maturity phase i started this new product about uh, the online training programs that i am doing right now with uh, most of your faculties so that is my product portfolio in the introduction phase my growth phase where i spend a lot of time is gamification and business lab setups uh, i have spent a lot of time where we can help colleges set up business laboratories using games learning through games so both of them are very similar one is you buy the products or you can come and do workshops so both are very similar consulting and mentoring is one more thing which is right now in the growth phase where i am mentoring around 6 to 7 startups and giving sales strategy consultancy to six companies uh, i put in lot of efforts because sometimes i need to put efforts uh, in the growth phase not because of uh, uh, it's not similar for example i'm mentoring i'm sorry giving consultancy to one glass company uh, glass manufacturing company uh, i don't have any i have marketing and b2b sales experience but uh, understanding the glass industry i need to do my homework so i have to put in efforts to understand how the glass industry is growing or what is the uh, strategies that competition is doing so efforts are needed in the growth phase and that's what going to give me result, results so but consulting and mentoring is similarly one and gamification business level is similarly one so any of you salesman in me talking anybody of you wants to set up a business laboratory or know what is gamification just drop in a comment in the youtube video and i'll get back to you or you can text me in whatsapp okay regular college trainings which i was talking of earlier in around 10 days in a month i used to actually be in colleges doing lot of training pre placement training influencing the interviewer training in faculty trainings using nlp as a backbone uh, i don't put in efforts today except for one good morning message that i sent to most some of the faculties which i know uh, you know i don't uh, uh, put in much resources that's there uh, so that product uh, regular college training was there if not for covid uh, it would have still been in the maturity phase but of course post covid it might come back uh, still as a cash cow uh, right now it's not uh, giving me any kind of uh, dividends except for the branding that is created so probably you realize this and you start with product extensions uh, covid ke vaaste what i did first is i ventured into the us market which is a uh, strategy uh, my magic classes started a strategy why it's a different target segment why only teach to faculties and students why not start engaging with kids 
so that is one of the reasons but again my value proposition is still going to be the same the same uh, pre web series that i am doing same facebook 10 year challenge i shared the experience of first session i'm just repeating it uh, facebook ka 10 year challenge was done to understand how a people it is database so nothing comes free and i gave one classic example you don't need to learn from facebook or jio to give free to get market share if you have traveled in train from bangalore to mysore there is one kadle cart moonfali shengdana guy who opens one packet and gives everybody sitting in the coach 111 shengdana 111 kadle cart to everybody till the end and then comes and says 20 rupees 10 rupees packet 10 rupees packet or 20 rupees packet and people buy uh, because they have tasted it they know sample uh, quality is good and they buy it so you can even learn stuff from the kadleka vendor so why with no holds barred i am being admitting that this program that i am doing every first and third saturday uh, for faculties is something which i am giving free uh, at the same time what am i doing inherently i am building a brand value i am leveraging on my product extension i am bringing in a product extension for my other courses and other consultancy things that i do uh, so it's absolutely fine to understand that at the end of the day what we are doing is personal branding and uh, we need to accept this okay so let me come into the last slide uh, humble submissions uh, please don't misunderstand me for these three submissions because at the end of the day if we are starting to uh, focus on building a brand for ourselves or personal branding uh, we need to take care of this so in case i hurt somebody i'm extremely sorry but just focus on this let us have a target when i say let us have a target it's not a monetary target i'm talking about it is a target of having product in the product portfolio uh, today what happens is we are so engrossed in doing what we are teaching assignments uh, completing assignments uh, uh, project evaluation paper setting uh, scheme preparation uh, you know work overload everything uh, that we don't have a product portfolio so first activity which i will start doing is make a product life cycle and find out how many products you have in your product portfolio if you don't have have a target that i will start including these two products in the introductory phase from so and so date okay so that is something which you have to do so that's one request okay second uh, we we are very lucky that we are in the education industry these are the three industries which are growing tremendously retail healthcare and education okay uh, this is growing phenomenally okay so uh, i i'm just going one step further is there a possibility that you can cover convert education with health and retail can you do a combo effect can we give give a product in the product portfolio which involves retail and education or healthcare and education then you are in you know sitting in a, a, a time bomb which can explode in your favor uh, so focus on that third thing uh, again education definitely is a noble profession uh, but at the same time uh if some people feel with due respect if somebody feels that i don't want money i'm going to give only education to people fantastic respect salute to those people but at some point in time if as a faculty if we feel that uh we are not making the kind of money that we deserve then it is high time if you are feeling the pinch of it then i think it is high time to think of education as a business and be as a brand so this is something which we need to take care of i know it's a very dangerous statement but like i said if somebody still thinks education is uh, a noble profession and they are absolutely fine with it then hats off salute to those people because uh, i am sure there are a lot of people who exist in that manner they are they are they are very they want to serve the people but then but trust me those people will not even feel a pinch of remorse when uh, somebody uh, one of their student gets a 25 lakh package they actually feel elated uh, fantastic but somewhere if we feel that we are not getting what we deserve then let us not blame the system let us start building a brand for ourselves that's the only submission which i make i'm not against people in fact i respect i salute those people who say education is a noble business yes but at the end of the day if we are looking at evaluating success as a monetary value which is often done by most people then i think we need to start focusing on building a brand for ourselves so this is one thing which i want to share here uh, then we had uh, some discussions in the open forum uh, so Uh, with this uh, i would like to uh, i have covered whatever questions were asked to me in the open forum during the course of this recorded session as well uh, again apologies for not being able to record the session live i did not know what happened what group of happened but i did a mistake <laughs> i'll admit it uh, one small request uh, in case you are still there and watching this video please subscribe to the channel and uh, the bell uh, sign on top uh, next week we are planning to do a program on uh, understanding the pillars of digital or uh, uh 
digital marketing the pillars i'm not going to talk about much about strategization but i will make people understand what are the different pillars that exist so next time you come across an online advertisement or you see something online you will be able to gauge what this uh, the strategy that this company is adopting this will give you an overview uh, it's like a primer on digital marketing which will give you an overview but at the same time on strategy level it requires a deep more uh, reading and introspection so one and a half hour session i will be able to make people uh, aware of what is this you can use it for your own college strategy strategies marketing your strategy college marketing yourself in the digital platform etc you can do it okay so thanks so much for uh, being a wonderful audience wish you all the very best god bless you take care be safe stay safe thank you thank you